All right. In this video, I want to tell you what is to shortly come to pass so that when it happens, you will believe because you're not believing the gospel. Right now, you could escape all these things if you would just come to the cross and you would give your life over to Jesus so that he may die for you and that you may receive his life so that you can escape all these things. And since you didn't want to do that, I'm going to tell you these things that are going to come to pass so that you can still end up being saved. Just not in the same way. So anyway, let's get into this here. I have a, a picture up here of YouTube user Born Again Barbarian. That's this YouTube user here. And he had a video that I saw from somebody, a uh, clip. They had a, uh, a video, they were talking about things, and they put a clip of this guy in this video that he made in that video. So I went to his channel, checked out the video, because I thought it was interesting, and I'm just taking this screenshot of it because I want to talk about this uh, triangle that he's talking about here and branch off from it a little bit, I guess, and talk about it a little bit more. If you want to know what he had to say about it, his channel is The Born Again Barbarian, and the title of his um, video is The Devil's Triangle Part 1. Now, when he was talking about this, at first I was like, okay, this is a little weird, but as he was explaining it, I was like, okay, I, I see where you're going. I, this makes perfect sense. And it was actually connecting to a lot of things that I was actually talking about in a video I made about red versus blue, where there, it's two sides, but they're the same, right? It's kind it's the left and right wing of the same bird two sides of the same coin right i mean they're they're both together but they're playing opposite sides to create this huge division of this negative positive polarity where it creates a storm like a thunderstorm is this build up of negative and positive energies build up in the clouds and in the earth and eventually what happens is the thun the lightning and the thunder and they just clash and then everything is neutralized. The negative and positive has been balanced, it's now neutral, and it's like they canceled each other out and it's joined. Right? And that's what we see happening is this storm building up and the negative and the positive energies charging up and they're getting ready to smash into each other. But this is going to be an order out of chaos. And as I'm going to talk about, it's the phoenix that's going to rise out of the ashes. And it's going to be joined. And uh, you'll understand as I, as I explain this. And I'm going to use this guy as a foundation and what he was talking about here to explain what I'm going to explain. Now, he says this is the devil's triangle. and uh, I get why he would put the church up here because it rides the beast, right? I, I don't know if he did that intentionally, but he has here IFB and Catholic. IFB is Independent Fundamental Baptist. And he's basically saying uh, the Protestants, the, you know, even though the most hardcore Protestants mixed with Catholicism up here, right? And... He was talking about how the Protestants and the Catholics are uniting, where Protestants don't aren't even Protestants anymore, because the name Protestant came from protesting against the Catholic Church, right? Protestants don't do that, and they actually talked about Catholics as if they're brothers, and they're uniting against common enemies, such as atheists abortionists, uh, these extreme moralist leftists that just make up morality as they go uh, against Islam, right? We have these common enemies, and it's bringing them into a unity, 
right? And they're uniting against these enemies when that definitely shouldn't happen, right? I mean, yeah, you both have common enemies, but you need to look at it like this. You're, you're saved and you're, you're preaching the gospel. You're telling everybody about how Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again the third day, and you're out trying to get people saved. You're not living to make this life in this world a better place because it's not really your home. You're a pilgrim just going through trying to call people out of it so that they can escape with you because eventually this place is going to be destroyed and made anew, right? So you have enemies by preaching the gospel, atheists, Muslims, and other such groups who come against you, right? And you have fake Christians, such as the Catholics, claiming to have the same enemies, yet they don't know the gospel, they haven't accepted the gospel, and they don't preach the gospel. They don't go around the world telling people, hey, the good news is that we get to go to heaven. God made a way, and we just have to accept it. It's a free gift. He died for you. Your past, present, and future is taken care of, and he has given you his life. You're covered by his righteousness. You get to go to heaven if you accept this by faith, by believing and trusting God that he actually is for you, not against you. He actually loves you, and he made a way. Catholics and a lot of the Protestants don't even know this gospel, and if they know it, they reject it, and they're definitely not preaching it. So why would you unite with these people who are basically on the, the same side of with these atheists and their Muslims because they're lost and you need to reach them with, with the gospel? Why would you unite, unite with them as in darkness uniting with light and righteousness with unrighteousness because you have common enemies? It's just a obvious subtle tactic to distract you from actually preaching the gospel and focusing on that and getting entangled into the cares of this world. And I hope you can see this. Maybe by the time you're actually listening to this, it all makes sense to you because it's all clearly happening before your eyes. He, he made a good point about how, no, Islam is not the Antichrist system. This is here. And he made the point about how it is this these Catholics and the Protestants uniting with them that actually put up somebody like the Roman pontiff as their head. So it's easily made so that somebody could come in such as an Antichrist figure and take the seat there and people would go to him. Muslims don't have this one guy who rules over Islam. Right. And we see now with the Catholic Church that they're actually uniting with Islam, with their Vatican I and their Vatican II and the things that the, the Roman pontiff has been saying about how these Muslims worship the same God that they worship. And it's like, oh, oh that's because you guys both worship Satan, apparently, because the Muslims, their God, Allah, has no son. One of the 99 names of their God is the great deceiver. Is that the God you're worshiping Catholics? Well, according to your church, it is. And it's bringing in the, the Islam to join with them because Catholicism is the universal religion. It's the Roman universal religion. And Rome wants to conquer the world and when they would conquer areas, they didn't destroy their religions. They would incorporate their religions into their own. And that's what they're doing with Islam right now. It's not. There's nothing new under the sun. It's not universal because it's the one true church. It's universal because it incorporates everything. That's why we have this ecumenicalism and they're bringing in everybody, and you have these traditional Catholics who are even speaking out against such things. 
But hey, uh, you church, you, you think the gates of hell won't prevail. It's not what it looks like. Uh, but anyway, uh, that pretty much sums up this part of this triangle here. Uh, this is basically the mother. And over here is the father, the alt-right, the government, the state. And this is going to be the ultimate uh, for f government that's in charge. It's going to be alt-right. And it's going that way because with this storm brewing between basically capitalism and communism, which is actually socialism, because true communism, nobody owns anything, not even the state, because everybody owns everything. So all these communist nations we see are not actually truly communist, they're socialist, but we pretty much tie them together these days in with this communist socialist structure, the government owns everything and nobody else does. And we see these two budding uh, forces here with capitalism and this communist socialist government state uh, beliefs here. And it was like I was telling you about the red versus blue. They're going to clash and they're both the two wings of the same bird, two sides of the same coin. It doesn't matter what side you pick, you're picking the same one. And they're working together to bring about this ultimate desire. It's problem, reaction, solution, right? As he put it, it was thesis, antithesis, and then uh, conclusion. I can't remember exactly the way he put it. But it's basically you cause the problem, and then you offer the solution that people wouldn't have accepted unless there was that problem. And then you lead, you just led them into what you actually ultimately wanted. So you got this clash between capitalism and this communist socialist structure, and they clash. And then, like I told you, it's the storm, the negative and the positive, boom, just crash into each other. And then they neutralize and end up actually joining. And then what happens when you actually join capitalism with a communist and socialist structure? Like this guy pointed out, you get fascism, where it's basically a uh, the government rule as a corporation and a capitalist structure where nobody else owns anything. You get this weird amalgamation of this mixture of capitalism and communism mixed together. And it's ultimately the alt-right like I was saying, is these anti-fascists on the left are causing a, a basically a pull of the of a rubber band where they're just pulling so far that it's going to snap and slingshot everybody to this side, right? Because if, let's say, for an example, in America, you're just some white guy, well, and it, doing your job, whether you're just working someplace at McDonald's or you're working at some shipping place like UPS or whatever you're doing, you're just going through your life and going through your struggles. And then you got people just calling you racist and sexist and a bigot and all this stuff just for existing. And, you know, at first it's just like ignoring it, like, well, this is stupid. And then eventually it's just like, man, why, what the hell is wrong with these people? And then eventually it's like, hey, why don't they shut up? And then eventually it's like, we need to do something about it because they're taking control and they're destroying the country, right? And then you build up the opposite charge, which is all right. Like I was saying in that blue versus red video, and ultimately it seems like the right is going to be what ends up getting in charge. And it's going to be fascist. And like we saw in Nazi Germany, the Catholics were riding that beast, the alt-right fascist beast, and it was anti-Semitic. And that's exactly how it's going to be in the end times. Like you read in Revelation, the church is gone in Revelation chapter 4, and the target now 
is Israel. The focus is on Israel. We got uh, 144,000 Jews that are sealed. We got the two witnesses that are only going around in the city of Jerusalem, in Israel. The whole focus is around them. And Jesus returns. He comes to the Mount of Olives and destroys the enemies of Israel. It's all tied around that. And we see the system being built to actually fight against them right now. And the child of this union is the military, military industrial complex. And what is the polar opposite of the military is civilians. Right? And the they too are going to mix. You can see this with some nations, even uh, Israel, where you're required to spend at least two or three years in the military once you turn 18 before you, you know, you go on with your life. So we're going to see this mixture of this military thing. And if you've been to any real church in America, they're basically all 501c3 organizations. I don't know any that's not. And they support the military. It's God and country. Well, it's like, how about it's God and maybe country if it actually supports God? Right? It's just like it's God and family. But it's God if your family doesn't support God. Right? You need to actually have that dividing line. That ultimately God. Jesus Christ over everything else. But they get you here because it's always the children that fight. The mother and the father, they set up rule and they got the children to go fight their battles. And this is a, a very Catholic thing. Uh, I got actually experience with this where you're talking with Catholic families and they don't like you because you're not Catholic in what you're saying. Well, then all of a sudden their child acts out and ends up hitting you with something, spilling something on you, doing something to you that you can't react to it because it's a eight-year-old child that did it, right? So you can't do anything, really. You're like, hey, why don't you take care of your child? And they'll just go, oh, why'd you do that? Uh, go to your room or... Whatever it is, and you see that they hide behind the child. Right? And uh, it's the same thing with uh, God as well, where he has the Father and the Holy Spirit, and it is Jesus who is the head of the armies, and he comes back with the armies of heaven. So he's the son, and he's going out to do the battle. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Um, and we can see that the military, with the military intelligence, is actually pushing this along. They're allowing the left to do things through these riots, these Antifa riots, and these Black Lives Matter things, and they're destroying things and just being violent and destructive because it's to build up the charge that will build up the charge that they want. They do the opposite to slingshot you over here. They get you thinking that, oh, these guys are getting in power so that you support the change that's coming. Because if the Catholic fascist state just came in what would you do you would fight against it but just like in nazi germany that's not what happened first the country was destroyed by a communist socialist government where the economy was destroyed and we can see that happening where our economy is being destroyed and the the value of our money is being destroyed and that caused a reaction where they slingshot it over to supporting Hitler. And I see a Donald Trump as the place of a Hitler where he got some, 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 some support, but not enough to be a dictator of the nation. 
obviously, right? But you get the left to destroy the country and the economy. All of a sudden, he looks a lot better. Where he, when he was talking about cleaning the swamp and he was warning you, you about these people, you start trusting him. But you got to understand that it's WWE wrestling here where you wouldn't care about the good guy, whether it was somebody like Hulk Hogan or Bret Hart and later on someone like Stone Cold or The Rock and John Cena and how it's gone on and on. You're where they're going out wrestling. You'd be like, whatever, who cares? But you build up a bad guy that you want to see come down, such as uh, with Hulk Hogan, there was a Yokozuna. Japan was coming and terrorizing uh, American wrestlers. And so Hulk Hogan stands up and defeats him. And you're like, yeah, right? At least as a child. And it goes on and you have Bret Hart doing similar stories. And uh, one of the biggest ones was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus the owner of the company, Vince McMahon. It was the ultimate bad guy. Everybody hates their boss. And he would just go and whoop his boss's ass and everything. And you cheer for it. And then I, I don't I haven't watched since being young, but I know John Cena is real big. And I see him do his saluting, his army support and whatnot. So he's leading people in that way. And uh, I imagine it's the same kind of story, right? They build up the bad guy and he comes in and saves the day. Well, that's Trump. You don't really give a shit about this guy. He's a pompous rich guy. He doesn't care about you. But then you build up the bad guys. All of a sudden, we need him. Right? It's just like Trump. Uh, I've seen some clips about him calling himself Batman. And after seeing a couple of them where he says, I'm Batman. I don't think he's just saying it to be cool or he thinks it's funny or whatever. I think there's a meaning to it. Because he is rich right and he's supposed to be there to help you just like batman he's fighting crime yet if you had batman in your city you wouldn't really care if the only real problems in your city were some minor crimes like some people rob a corner store or not even by gunpoint right and sometimes people break the law with speeding or something like that, right? Like there's not, there's very mild crime going on or crime that can't be handled by the cops. I mean, if there's, I mean, they hit, the cops can handle it. Who cares? You don't need Batman. Why, what's this guy dressing up as a cape? Was he, who does he think he is? But then if you've got this villain that pops up, all of a sudden you've got the Penguin and the Joker, these weird characters coming out and they're causing trouble. And now Batman comes up and he's going to stop them because the cops can't or the cops are under their thumb. Now, all of a sudden, Batman's a big deal. All right, this weirdo dressed up as the bat as the bat is actually useful and uh, as a hero. But you first need to give him a villain or else he's just a weird guy. Right. And that's what we see going on. And I can see. Trump being the head of this, and uh, a lot of alt right is supporting him, even though he is supporting Israel, and Israel loves him. That's just perfect to show how he is very anti Christ like. For Israel loves him, they even printed his face on one of their temple coins. Where He's going to win them over. Not all of them. And ultimately turn on them because his main support is going to be the fascist, all right, anti Semitic group. And he's going to turn on them. You could see it all being set up. It's the same story. I mean, what I hear a lot of people say is what people learn from history is that you never learn from history. Right? I mean, these things have happened before, and the Bible even tells us in Ecclesiastes 1 9 that what has happened will happen. What has happened is required to happen. There's nothing new under the sun. History repeats itself. 
So if you pay attention to history and how things have always unfolded, that's how it's going to happen again. The devil doesn't have new tricks. He recycles the old ones because they've worked and they've manipulated people and they're still doing it, even to people who know about it, who know about Nazi Germany. It's still fooling them. Uh, but anyway, uh, so we can see uh, there's a lot of this, uh, what I would call mixing. Babylon confusion, where you get the Protestants and Catholics uniting, the capitalist and communist socialist mixing, the military and the civilians mixing. And that's what it talks about in the Bible, about the final kingdom being Babylon, and it's a mixture. And in Daniel 2, it talks about uh, iron and clay mixing, and mixing with the seed of men. Because there's going to be this mix that's going to change you. And that's why you can't be saved if you take this mark. Because ultimately they're going to mix where it's going to be man, machine, and probably some genetic changes. Where it's going to be like in the days of Noah where the fallen angels mingled with the seed of man through the daughters of man. Now they're going to do it by mixing with your DNA and mixing in artificial intelligence and by doing this you can't be redeemed you forfeited your soul you're lost and i like the point he made because i know about it in the military they already have put like rfid chips in the ids and i was in the army like 15 years ago and they had them in the chips i mean on your id you had this chip in there and you, they give you a, a, a copper sleeve to put it in so that no one could actually read off of it and get your information. You only uh, took it out of the sleeve when you were going to use it so that nobody else could actually steal the information. Because apparently you could just scan it from a distance unless you put it in that copper sleeve. So we see the military setting up this system and it's a the fascist system where they gave everybody like in the concentration camps a number a mark and they put the star that they call the star of david it's not really on the jews putting a mark right and uh yeah uh, so we, again we see this system being set up and it has a lot to do with America. And I've thought about this, and I hear people talking about it, where they're saying, America is not in Bible prophecy. And for the most part, I agree. I was like, you don't really see America, unless you think of maybe eagle wings, which is depicted upon the lion and been removed from the lion uh, in Daniel chapter 7. And the eagle wings that help Israel escape to Petra in, uh, I believe it's Revelation chapter 12. That might be a hint of what was left of anything good about America. Uh, but that's where this next part comes up. Some things that I want to branch off, talk about, which is this right here. So there's a deadly wound to one of the seven heads of this beast. Now this beast has a body like a leopard and it has seven heads that are like a lion and it has feet of a bear. So it's basically telling you that it's a combination of all the beast in Revelation chapter, our Revelation, Daniel chapter 7, where it talks about uh, three beasts and then this fourth beast, which is not really described, but it talks about having seven heads and ten horns well i actually don't believe it has the seven heads yet but in that depiction but it has the horns and it has one head and if you count all the heads in daniel chapter seven of all the beasts it ends up coming to seven because you got the lion's head you got the bear's head you got four heads of the leopard and then the beast that's not really described what it is has its own head now 
the undescript beast might have more to do with America than I previously thought or anybody else really thinks. And I'm going to explain. Because I was listening to someone this morning and it kind of reminded me of the video that I just went over in that picture. And it, I saw the phoenix coming up from the fire. And I was like, okay, okay. History repeats itself, right? History repeats itself. I think we're going to have a World War Three and a World War Four, and America is going to be the bad guy. We're going to be Germany. You see, it's already happening, right? We're going to get into this war going on with Russia and China, and we're going to lose, and we're going to lose because we are going to be betrayed from inside and it's going to be blamed on the Jews, just like it was blamed on the Jews in Nazi Germany. That these, the left and these Jews in the government betrayed Germany and they're going to betray America. But you got to look at it from their point of view. The Jews can see such as in Germany, as in America, that there's the alt-right fascists that, want to take power if they take power they're going to kill the jews so it's not so much that they are supporting leftist ideologies as in that's basically the only option opposed to the fascist and i'm not trying to say that they're innocent and that they don't support a lot of these crazy ideas from the left but they got to be on that side for their survival because the alt-right gets in charge. They know they're going to die. But by supporting the left, they feed more of the fire and the hate towards them on the right. So America is going to collapse because of the war. And the dollar is going to go to shit. Just like in Nazi Germany, things are going to fall apart. There's going to be like reparations and they're going to be sucking us dry. And then Trump is going to be Hitler. And maybe, maybe it's not so much Trump. Maybe it's his son. There's some weird stuff about Byron Trump. And what's interesting is they're both German-Americans. Interesting, interesting stuff there. With relation to the monarchy of England, too. So they're going to rise back up and when they rise back up america is going to rise from the ashes i believe there's going to be some nuclear exchange and i believe conveniently uh, some very leftist places such as new york and la are probably going to get nuked and destroyed in this war so that there's more of a alt-right leaning in america more support for somebody like Trump and they'll rise up and it'll be like a Nazi Germany where people are going to be praising the leader just like they praised Hitler because he fixed the nation and brought him back to prominence so it's the deadly wound is going to happen to America because I see each one of these heads is said to be mountains I can see them being the seven continents. And America is going to be one that gets a deadly wound. And you could say that the deadly wound happened to uh, Germany, the, the fascist state that will rise again. And what's interesting about this is the makeup of this beast. It is the lion seems to be a depiction of England which had a line with wings on it, depicting it, its nation. But then later the wings were removed. And what's interesting about that is then America comes and forms and uses an eagle as its symbol. And England doesn't have the wings on it anymore. So when we look at the lion, we can see that the beast speaks English. The body 
seems to be a representation of Germany as Germany was a mixture of three different races where you can see white, black, and yellow with the leopard. Germany's allies, Japan and the Arabs, they mixed together and they fought the Axis power. I mean, the Allied powers, they became the Axis. Right? And Germany had three Reichs where it stood up, so three heads, so it's going to have another one. And it might be through America that its actually fourth head comes up. Maybe. Maybe it has its own head pop up. And America is that undescript beast. And in Daniel chapter 7. And this indescript beast, it could be because it's a, an amalgamation of all of these where America, too, is a mixture of all the, the races. It's a, uh, what do they call it, a mixing pot. And then it has feet of a bear. The bear represents Russia. You can even put China there, because they have a panda bear representing their nation. And that has a symbol to do with the communist socialist structure. So what it's standing on is this communist social structure but it also has a, some kind of monarchy as it has crowns right so there's something it's a mixture of what we see going on whether it has to do with capitalism communist socialism monarchy oligarchy you see all of this coming together where it has a communist socialist structure with, mixed with capitalism so it's fascist and then it has a group of horns with crowns so it's an oligarchy but there's one ultimate crown above the crowns this antichrist beast so then it becomes a monarchy so you see it just a culmination of all of it right and that's why it's kind of confusing because you start to see it as a certain thing but it's really also kind of its opposite at the same time it's it's that's why it's called babylon it, which means confusion. It's just mixing contradicting things together and just trying to make it work. It's like a child trying to make a artwork and they just getting all these scribbling stuff and they're just putting all their imagination and it just that's what you get, right? Uh but uh it ties into what we see and some of these depictions that have to do with supposed secret societies in America where they say the eagle, uh, like on the dollar bill, is not re really an eagle, but a phoenix that's going to rise from the ashes. Where they have this plan of basically exactly what they did with Germany with America. And that it's going to will appear to burn and have a deadly wound, but then the phoenix rises up. It's renewed, and it's this new creature. I can see it. I see it happening. Yeah. Oh, excuse me there. Sorry about that. But anyway, there was a, this guy called, uh, his name is Kurt Zondel, I believe his name is. He was a German that left Germany after World War II and went to Canada. And he was trying to say that uh, the Holocaust was exaggerated. And he was saying that America is ripe to repeat what happened in Germany. And he was talking about a lot of things that I was talking about, but from his point of view, where he sees a lot of the things that were going on in Germany happening here. Because Germany also had this issue with... Uh, uh, homosexuality and all these other weird things that were going on like that weird sexual things and they ended up putting those people in camps as well and putting them to death and we can see America being slingshotted into that same mindset 
Uh, but uh, we'll see. But uh, yeah, so I think that's how it all comes together, at least from the point of view of being an American and how America fits into Bible prophecy. I think it comes back from the ashes as part of this beast. And this beast isn't said to have wings, so those wings, I think, are given over to Israel. Because that's what it says in Revelation chapter 12, is that the woman, Israel, was given the great wings of an eagle. So I think America's destroyed and its wings given to Israel, and a lot of the Jews use this ability to escape to Petra. And then the beast rises up and the whole world wanders after the beast. They wonder after it because it's back. America's back. And it's not going to be uh, Protestant America. It's going to be Catholic America. Like in Nazi Germany where the Reformation started. They had a lot of Protestants. But after uh, World War II, a lot of civilian places that were actually attacked were Protestant. And it basically was Catholic. Uh, they, they, uh, the Catholic Church went and basically reclaimed Germany for themselves by force. And this very deep plan, this very intricate plan, a very subtle deceptive plan, and people are just not studying history not thinking it's going to happen again, even though you can see it happening over and over again. But uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? There's some weird things I will end this video with. That if you ever get into the whole uh, QAnon thing, and you go look into some of those groups, and you start just paying attention to what they're saying, there's some weird things going on there. Were they saying that Donald Trump is tight with the aliens? And that there's these technologies that they would bring in, but they need to change the system up. So the destruction of America would set it up where they would bring in these smart cities and this technology that can stop and even reverse aging and cure all these different diseases and get all this technology from the, the aliens and Trump got a lot of this technology because he ended up getting all the patents and inventions of Nikola Tesla and you can actually look into this and you can see that Donald Trump's father actually got all the stuff from Nikola Tesla so they got little pieces of reasons to believe what is being said right they give him a little piece of truth and then lead them along with these these stories and that these things would be ushered out and that there's this Saint Germain fund that has enough money in it to actually pay off the whole world's debt I don't know who they get to pay it to but apparently it pays off the whole world's debt to somebody imagine it's Satan himself I'm guessing and this is a way where Satan can actually come and pretend that he is actually Jesus. Because Jesus came and he paid our sin debt. Right? So this Antichrist will come and he's going to pay off. All your debts are going to be erased. Everybody starts anew. Not only do they start anew, everybody's also going to be given free money. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be like, wow, but then all of a sudden you are going to be required to have to take this certain kind of injection of some sort to be able to uh, accept it. Because you see, in order to accept the free gift from Jesus Christ, you need to allow his word into you. And when his word enters you, it's a seed that is planted in your heart. That only gets there by truly believing it. 
it takes root and you are born again into the spirit of god and you are saved and you're sealed with the spirit of god and you're part of the family of god forever and this antichrist wants to put something in you as well and it's convenient that it'd probably be through some kind of injection through a needle which looks a lot like a snake tooth to inject you with the serpent's seed because he also wants to change you and make you part of his family where you can't be redeemed just like he can so we can see the two polar opposites of what's going on those who have the seal of god cannot be lost but those who take the seal of satan can't be saved right it's basically once saved, always saved, once damned, always damned. Right now, you're not damned. Right now, you're not. You're on the fence. Right now, you can escape all these things by accepting Jesus' sacrifice for you. Or you can laugh about it, think it's foolish, and be like, you know what, I'm going to wait and see. While you wait and see, you're going to have to suffer a lot of things. If you don't die in a lot of these wars but let's say you you survive and all this stuff that's going on you're going to have to suffer the heat of the day the cold of the night the lack of clothing and shelter not getting food and water so you're starving and you're dehydrated and you can't be mingled with society you're gonna have to leave your careers your businesses, your schooling, in your homes, you're going to have to suffer and then face the sword and be beheaded if you want to be saved. And if you don't want to be beheaded, well, then you have to survive the whole time while you suffer through everything. Because during this time, if you take that mark so that you can get food and water and say, oh, God knows my heart and I'm just doing this because I have to and to help other people, well, you're damned. And Jesus said, whoever will seek to save his life will lose it. But whoever will lose their life for his sake, will save it on to eternal life. In the context, he's talking about this, this end time period here. So, I hope you think about these things and get saved now while you can because time is running out. And if you're not part of the rapture, I hope you remember this video. And then you're like, okay, I need to get my, my act together. And I pray God gives you the strength to do so. I don't want to see you perish. That's why I'm making this video, even though I know a good lot of you won't even hear it. And a good lot of you that hear it, just kind of dismiss it, and mock it or whatever. But hopefully, when these things start to happen, you'll eat the humble pie and admit that you were wrong. Then you get saved with me. And then we can laugh about it later on. Hopefully. Instead of crying about it. And I don't mean crying as mocking about it, but crying because of... Just be lost. Gone. But anyway... Thanks for watching. Take care.